I want us to start with one verse today. And the one verse is one that we've known and you've heard this verse many a time. But it's Joel 2.1. Joel 2.1. It says, Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sound alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Mm. We have just started, and we just had the Festival of Trump, Trumpets in Rosh Hashanah this last week, and it's the beginning of the new Jewish year. But I count it as the beginning of our year. And things are changing. We're looking forward for things are happening. But we have to understand that the Lord is coming soon. He's coming soon. Yes. When we had the Festival of Trumpets, we blew the shofar for many things. And we made loud speaking. And when we blow a shofar, is we understand that blowing the shofar or the trumpet, that we are actually telling the enemy to get on the run, Ooh. to run, to flee, to flee seven different ways, as the scripture says. And then it says that we have to, and we're inviting for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we need to get this in our mind because why? Time is growing short, people. Time is growing short. If we see things that are happening, we see our religious liberty is being taken away. Mm. We see in churches are being shut down. We're seeing all different things that our freedoms and our rights are being trampled upon. We are seeing the rulers of darkness are listened to more than people of the light. And we're seeing this, and it's time that we blow those trumpets. Now, wait a minute, blow the trumpets. Not all of us have trumpets or shofars. Yeah. But see, the trumpets is actually the body of Christ that is sounding the alarm in the face of sin and compromise. I want you to get that in your mind. Mm. Is that we as body of Christ have been silent too long. Mm. And we need to start sounding the alarm because time is running out. Mm. Even if the Lord does not come in a year or two, us as body of Christ and other people, freedoms are being stripped. Our liberty is being stripped. Mm -hmm. We're seeing all these things and it's time that our voices become that trumpet that we sound the alarm and we start speaking it out. Instead of being the silent majority, we need to be a majority that starts speaking the truth. Amen. So we need to understand that we are given a voice. We have been given direction by the Holy Spirit. Yes. We're given direction by God that we need to be that trumpet that sounds the alarm because right now we're just letting other people sound the squeaky wheel, you know, gets much grease. Mm. And so we need to quit being, we need to get greased up <laughs> and we need to start, yeah. start talking, yeah. talking. We're going to quit being like the tin man mm -hmm. that, you know, cause he needed grease to move his mouth. Wow. We need the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of God be that grease in our mouth that we can start speaking. So we have to understand that we see that, one of the things that we say that we need to sound the alarm 
And we need in the face of sin. In Ephesians 5.11, Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing that we actually, we're, because we do not say anything, because we do not sound the alarm, because we don't speak out, we're actually having fellowship with darkness. Mm -hmm. nah. We're having fellowship with the sin because we are silent and we're letting sin and darkness rule over us because we have not spoke out. We have not been speaking the word of God out. We need to start speaking the word and call things out. Lord. We see there's a lot of things happening now. You know, we need to start speaking against. You know, people are saying, this is my body and I have a choice. But then they're telling us we have no choice and we need to give up our freedom. Yeah. So we have to understand that we got to start speaking up if we don't speak up and start sounding the alarm because there are so many people yeah. that are being led like sheep to the slaughter. Yep. They're just being led because they do not know the truth. And we are being given that truth and we need to start speaking the truth out in our daily lives. We need to speak it out. Now, we do not need to be harsh and go burn down buildings and do this and that and that. We need to speak in our matter of our behavior, the matter of our speech, in our way of life. It's just like I pray many a day before, if I know I'm going somewhere. I always pray, Lord, let my appointments be your anointments. And every time I go out, that the Lord is able for me to speak truth to somebody. But we need to get to the point, to the point that we do not quit speaking and sounding the alarm because right now there's, we need to sound out. We need to speak out like we have never spoke before. What we have to understand that we do not need to have the fellowship with darkness. Now, when we see where people are trying to take our rights away no. and we see these things happening, we don't stand up. We just go ahead and do what they say. Mm. And what we have to understand, then you say, well, I'm not having fellowship with it. Well, when we're not speaking it against it, we are having fellowship with it because we're letting what other people say and the power of darkness rule us and us instead of ruling it. So we have to understand, but it says that that scripture says, do not have fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But then it says, but rather reprove them. Mm. Otherwise, what that says, that what we need to do is rebuke it or expose the sin. See, there is so much going on that is sinful. There are so many deals under the thing going on with people that they are led by the power of darkness instead of by the light. And we have to understand that we need to get to the point in our life that we start rebuking that sin and we can rebuke that in our prayer. We can, instead of when we hear people saying negative, that we just kind of sit back and just let them speak it. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to blow our trumpets. It's time for us to sound the Lord. We see people going astray and we keep silent. Mm. And it's just like I hear people say, well, you know, those teenagers, you know, you know, they need to learn from their mistakes. Nah. That's a lie from the gates of hell. Mm. 
Mm. We need to teach them so they don't have to make the mistake. Yes. Yes. Years ago, when I was doing counseling, yes. crisis intervention counseling for a large high school in Texas, I had a young man that came to me and he was involved in drugs and doing all this other stuff and, you know, sexual activities. And I was counseling him. I, in fact, at that, that high school, I counseled 90 people a month and had group sessions every day. And so this young man told me he was raised in a Christian home. His mother was a true believer. But what he said, this mama said to him, well, when you hit bottom, you'll come back to God. And I said, wait a minute. If you know the truth, and he said, I know I need to get back to God. Why do you want to hit bottom? Mom. Won't you hit right now? So that's what we need to understand, that we need to talk and expose sin and rebuke sin and we just need to reprove the sin that just say wait a minute where are you going is wrong mm -hmm. but see we're silent too much wow. but it's time for us to sound the alarm that if we see somebody going in the wrong direction out of love and kindness we need to show them and point them to the right direction. Lord. Now, we do not need to do it in anger and provoke them. We need to, to anger, but we need to do it in the gentle and led by the Spirit and let the Lord open the doors for us to say it. Lord. It's time for us to sound the alarm and quit being silent. Now, we have to understand that we have to do this. We need to embarrass sin before it embarrass us. You understand what I'm saying? I want to say it again to get this in your spirit. We need to embarrass sin before it embarrass us. That, you know, a lot of times because we're quiet and we're not sounding the alarm and we're not blowing our trumpets, which I'm saying is our mouth. Yeah that we're not speaking the truth, that we're letting sin go on, then we have to understand that it's time to open our mouth and embarrass that sin. Wow. If we don't, it will jump all over us. Wow. Now, the way we can embarrass sin is and exposing sin is speaking the truth. And how do we know what is truth get into the word and start speaking the word out start proclaiming that word out it's just like the one verse i always like when people are going astray you know oh oh i'm trying to think of it right now you know how your mind just goes off to left field you know you know they put people in left field so they they're usually the worst Players out in left field. I always, they always put me in left field because I couldn't throw with a dime. But anyway, is that, you know, that God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from the destruction. He has sent us the word to us so we can do, speak that word to deliver people from their destruction. How many of us see people that we know they're going on a path of destruction? Mm, we know this. Yes. And we don't speak because we're afraid mm. they might not like us anymore. Nah. Or they might hurt our feelings. Nah. Or we might run them away. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm afraid if I, if I say something, something, I'm going to run them away. Well, if they're already going to hell, you're not, not speaking. You're just adding fuel to it to push them more, to make the fire even hotter. Nah. So we have to understand, we need to speak the truth, reveal the truth, so that God, because when we speak that word, that he is able to restore these people mm. to the way of life 
that he has called and ordained them, that he says that none should perish. And so when we learn to be that trumpet and sound and the alarm, you know, how many times that you had a little kid and they always got up to a heater or a fire and we kept saying, get away from the fire, mm -hmm. get away from the fire, it'll burn you. And so we're sounding an alarm to them. But then when the people get older, well, they have the right to choose. Mm. So we let them jump right in the fire mm. instead of giving that warning and sounding that trumpet to them. Mm. Yeah. One of the things that we have to understand when we blow our trumpets is that we need to call attention to the sins mm. and to wrong attitudes wrong attitudes how many of the people you know have stinking attitudes that they are ruled by attitude that is not altitude but this down low that is bringing down but see we need to sound that trumpet we need to sound that alarm to them because we need to you know Snatch him out of the gates. Yeah, like it says in in Jude, it talks about yeah. that some people, that you're going to love them into the Lord, but other, I'm paraphrasing, it says, some of them you got to scare the hell out of them. Yeah. And sometimes we're just going to have to scare it out of them. Mm. And that's where we speak and trumpet and sound the alarm to yeah. them. Well, then we go on, on First Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21. 1 Kings 18, 21. Now, this is where Elijah was with the prophets of Baal and he's talking to the people. It says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? Mm. If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Mm -hmm. Well, a while ago, I made the statement at first that, that we are the trumpets of the body of Christ who sound the alarm and face of sin. And then I said, and compromise. Compromise. Too many times that we have compromised our belief system mm -hmm. because we are afraid of hurting some people or we're afraid they might say something to us and we do not do it. Well, when you compromise, we say it that we come into agreement. We come into agreement. Now, see, we see a lot of people that say, well, there are gray areas out there. Well, really, things are black and white. Nah. Gray areas are gray areas that you don't have opinion either way. Mm. You're either believing the truth or taking part of the falsehoods. And you're combining the two. So we have to understand that when we compromise in our beliefs that we're actually coming into agreement with faulty beliefs. So we have to understand that a lot of things, this, and this is something I want to get in your mind, and when we're coming to sin and we don't sound the alarm and we do not open our mouth and we do not expose it for what it is, that we have to understand no. What we tolerate, we condone. Yes. Mm. What we tolerate, we condone. No. Too many times we mm. can we tolerate people going off awry. No. We tolerate them going something. We see this with our whole society. Things that we believed 30, 20, 30 years ago that was sin, now the world is saying it's not. No. And that we have to be totally acceptance to all behavior. Mm. 
We got to be total acceptance of every act of sin. They've, they've changed so many things in the in the medical records book. Things that once were sin is now, they say, it's a way of life. Mm. One of the things that, uh, that just bothers me, they've changed it right in the revised standard medical, is that they've changed where pedophiles is no longer a, is no longer trying to get the word condition. A, a condition. Mm -hmm. It's because these people are born this way. They just like loving on young children, mm -hmm. and they changed it. It's no longer a psychological condition. Mm -hmm. But that's just one. And you can think of other things, mm. other things that people are tolerating wrong behavior, so thus they're condoning it. That's the reason why we need to start speaking out and sounding that alarm is blowing our trumpets, nah. blowing our trumpets, because we are allowing it. How many of us called? Our congressman. How many of us written letters? Nah. Mm -hmm. We don't say anything. Mm. This is in the natural. Mm. And we need to do it. Just, just, uh, we don't think this way. Mm. We don't think this way. Nah. So we have to understand that we, we're compromising too much. So what we're doing when we compromise, we accept and allow behavior that is morally wrong and offensive. Mm. I want you to understand this. When we compromise, that we are allowing mm. behavior that is considerably morally wrong and offensive. And I'm going to add to that. To continue. Mm, nah. To continue. Well, we need motivation. Boy. And our motivation should be Jesus because he's the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. We need to pray, Lord, show me the way. Show me the truth. So I can make my life better and life of others better. Amen. Lord, use my mouth as the trumpet. Lord. That I can sound the alarm to save many people from condemnation. Thank you, Lord. Pull people out of the fire. Pull our nation out of the fire. Yes. Pull our world out of the fire. Yes. Because he's given that trumpet. He's given us the words to sound the alarm. Now I want to look at one last verse. And this is one that's just, you might not like this one. But it's a verse here, Ezekiel 33, 6. Ezekiel 33, 6 says, If a watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, the people be not warned. If the sword comes and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. The propensity to do evil. But the blood will I require at the watchman's hands. Mm. Mm. That's tough. He is telling us and he's old telling us it's time to sound the alarm. Oh. 
It's time to use our trumpets. It's time for us yes. to quit compromising. Glory. It's time for us to expose the sin. It's time for us to speak the truth. Yes. It is time to not be silent anymore. It is time mm. if we don't, we have blood on our hands. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we do not want blood on our hands. And Father, you're calling the body of Christ to be the trumpets, to sound the alarm. But Father, you are calling us individually. Open our hearts right now, Father that we'll sound that trumpet. And Father, help us to quit tolerating sin and expose it for what it is. So we'll quit condoning the darkness that's trying to overtake the light. But Father, we know Jesus is the light. And we need to speak out and sound the trumpet. Open our voice. And speak Jesus. And let light shine. Everywhere we go. Because his light shines on us. To direct our paths. Father. Give us. The voice of the trumpet. Let us be able to sound that alarm. Father, we speak this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen.